Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome back. It's Thursday. We're at Live Office Hours where I help you build a career you love. Great to have you today. It's all about your questions. Normally I show up to these things with a topic. I teach for 20 to 30 minutes and then I take your questions. Today, a dead solid hour of you. And it's Friday. Normally we're, we're on Thursday, but I see a lot of you got the memo and you're here and it's been great kibitzing with you in the chat. We're gonna dive right in. I don't have a whole lot of announcements. One thing I do wanna tell you though, is cause I always like to give the gifts out early. I, uh, I, I, well, hopefully you know that my firstborn interview intervention communication that gets you hired, for a while now, I've been giving this book away for free. This is a $29 hardcover book if you get it on Amazon. I just ordered 2,000 more copies. It's free, I paid for it. You get the ebook, the audiobook, which is another $27, and you also get an ebook called How to Interview the Employer 75 Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job. That's another 27 bucks. It's all yours free. All I ask is that you pay $7 shipping and handling to get it anywhere in the world. It makes no difference where you live, even if you're in Perth, Australia, which is the farthest place on the planet from where I am. $7. So grab it. I freaked out. We go through about I don't know, three, four hundred of these a month. People grab them, give or take. And I had 280 or 90 of them in the inventory. And so I, I literally yesterday just inked a deal. You know, the publisher loves it, the printer loves it, and the distribution company loves it because they all cheer when I do that. Anyway, grab it. I hope you, I hope you, uh, you get it. I hope it helps. And I have one here just in case I forget what advice I want to give you. I might have to read it very quickly in between questions. So let's see. I, uh, I see Ed was on, on, on the front lines, never met the guy Ed, and Carrie, great to have you, Byron and Santa, great to say hello to you, and let's get right in with the questions, two minutes, right in, let's do it, oh, and I've got my can I help you mug, so I am ready. So never met the guy Ed is asking, what if you have worked for several companies that no longer exist? Ed, you can do nothing about that. Uh, what I recommend on the resume, what I recommend on the resume is that you just put the name of the organization. If, uh, if on the application that you fill in, you want a reference that the company has uh, gone out of business, that's fine. If, for any of you, you are working for organizations that have been acquired by other organizations, what I recommend is you use two different techniques whichever one of these serves you more positively. And so I'll be very clear. Uh, if you've seen my resume videos, if you haven't, I have a whole resume playlist out there you can go and, and knock your socks off. I recommend that you put the company name down the left column that you, you do a reverse chronological order resume. I like the chronological resume. I don't like the functional resumes where you list your skills on the left. And I also don't like you putting your titles on the left. I want you to be portraying yourself as a team player. You care about the company more than you care about yourself kind of thing. So put the company name on the left. If the company is no longer in business because it was acquired, what I want you to do is you can do one of two things. You can put the current company name and then just put the current company name and then put in parentheses next to it, formerly doing business as. So if company ABC acquired company XYZ, you'd just put company ABC and then in parentheses, formerly doing business as company XYZ. If you wanna choose that option, if the current company that you work for has more name cachet in the types of positions that you are job searching for. So if that new company is a bit more well known than your old company, you might want to do it that way. Now, what about when you worked for an organization that was awesome, it was so awesome it got acquired by another company that maybe that's not its bread and butter. Uh, I can think of a number of organizations that we've worked with that have been acquired where this is the case where people in the space, they know the former company and what it did more so than they would know the current company. If that's the case, you can put your old company's name on the left and then in parentheses put now doing business as, and then whatever the current company is. So in that scenario I just painted, company XYZ would go on the left 
and company ABC would, would go in the parentheses and you would just do now doing business as. That's, that's the easiest way to do it. Don't worry about reference checks and all that other good stuff. Believe me, companies go out of business often enough. It, a lot of companies go out of business. It's a f- common affair. I would not sweat it. And if you get asked for references, you're welcome to uh, uh, fill, you know, fill in references from people you worked with at the organizations that went out of business. If they want to do reference checks or uh, background checks, I should say, uh, there are ways of looking online just to verify that the company was in existence. Uh, and typically in your, uh, it, and don't, don't quote me on this because I'm, I'm not a lawyer uh, or, and I don't know exactly how all these things work, but usually anybody who's actually paid you against, and I'm assuming you're in the US, your social security number uh, will come up on your background check. So I would not worry about it. I hope that suits you, Ed, and welcome to live office hours, my friend. All right. And I know you got the interview intervention book, so good for you. And I had an above average evening yesterday. But thanks for wishing me that. All right. Dagmar, hey, Dag, can we all can we all get a shout out to my beloved boot camper, Dag, who is also a PMP certified industrial engineering student and he's got credentials up the wazoo, but I want to give him a shout out for his service as a Navy pilot. And Dag, while I wish you and everybody else who supports their countries and keep it safe, while I wish there was no need for us to have people like you do that, I salute you for your service and I thank you for that. And it's great to have you, my friend. I hope you're enjoying the boot camp and the career accelerator program. I mean that. Let's give him a shout out. Come on, hugs, hugs around. All right. Joseph Batista, how you doing? Couple of, look at that. Joseph Batista, hi Andrew. I just got a couple of job offers after watching a handful of your videos. You are welcome, my friend. Love it. All right, yesterday I accepted, all right, on, on, on again with you. Yesterday I accepted an offer that is contingent on a background check. That's typical. My background is boring. That's okay, that's good and I don't anticipate any issues. Is it too risky to reject all outstanding offers right now? Yes. So folks, wait, this is awesome. You know what? I don't get this one a lot. I don't get this one a lot. I love this. Wait, couple things. So you, for those of you who are either in Joseph's case where you're juggling a a few, you know, you're juggling a few uh, processes that are in place, that are in play, and maybe you even got some other offers outstanding, or you are employed and you are interviewing with an organization who is about to make you a job offer. I highly recommend that you do not actually do anything as far as your either your resignation or letting the other companies go. I don't have a problem with you letting the companies that you're interviewing with know that you've received an offer. That you can you can notify them of that. That's totally okay. When you go back to your employer if you're currently working, I would not officially resign until the background check came back crystal clear. And you you never know, it's crazy stuff, weird stuff happens, uh, and sometimes they do uh, depending on what your position is, they could do general old background checks. Where'd you work? Were you employed? Like you said, you were on the app or whatever. Sometimes they do financial background checks, depending on, you know, if you're in the financial services industry, maybe you're in sales, things like that. Sometimes they do criminal checks and you never know what might pop up and you never know if there's any errors in the reports. But I would never resign until I actually had their written offer in hand and somebody notified me that the background check came back and was clean. So, yes, it's too risky. Don't do it. Don't do it. There's no reason for you to do that. None. All right, hope that helps. And congratulations. Steve, great to have you. Dag, I'll start with a question. All right, my friend, it's an honor to answer it. I'm in a small town and applying for jobs out of my area and mostly out of state. What can I do to better my chances? Dag, I shot a whole video with the nine techniques that I would use to find an out-of-state job. For any of you that are in, that fall into this category, which is basically everybody, if you are looking and open to relocating, in, if you're in the U.S. and you want to go to a different city or state, 
watch the video. If you are looking to move countries, watch the video. But it doesn't matter. Even if you're job searching of any kind, the nine techniques that I give you that you should implement, it's uh, how to find a, a out of state job or how to find a job out of state is the title. If you just go to the YouTube channel and in the search bar type out of state, it'll come up. My guess is you could probably just go to the YouTube um, search bar and it will come up fairly high in the ranking. But it's, it's nine great techniques. But the reason I say virtually anybody can do it is because every, every job search is remote now. Even if I'm just trying to get a job down the street, we still mechanically search the same way. So there's a few of those steps that are very specific to somebody who's reaching in across state lines or to the other side of the coat, you know, whatever it might be. But any of you will benefit from those nine techniques. Trust me, I would just go watch the video. It's like 10 minutes long and, and it, will, it, it, it will really, really help you. A lot of nuances there. Yep, and Steve, Coach and Dag, right. Everybody, if you got a question, just put some question marks in front because this chat gets pretty lively. It's usually really a problem when I'm teaching for 20 to 30 minutes and all the questions are queuing up and there's a lot of kibitzing going back and forth. It's not too bad today, but still, put the question marks. I do not want to skip you. I just go in order. I don't play uh, favorites, even though I especially love my boot campers and the people that are in the Mile Walk Academy, but I get, I get you all. That's what these sessions are for. Okay, all right, let's see. And Dag, see, Dag is giving good advice there. Julio from Portugal, how you doing, my friend? I know, Julio, you know these things. You know these things, my boot camper friend. All right, Ed, never met the guy, Ed. In one of your other videos, you mentioned not putting positions and listing companies in which you worked in, the, in those positions. I've done my AB, uh, MBA and will be switching career directions entirely and therefore would rather focus on the last job in the MBA. Would it be acceptable to include those positions in a group? Yes. Yes, I, I think that's great. Actually, I want to make sure I, I read this correctly. Uh, in one of my other videos, I mentioned not putting positions and listing companies in which you worked in those positions. I'm assuming what you meant to say is that is not related to what it is you're shooting for. So just to be really clear, and I'm not sure which one of my 150 videos you're referring to, but I do recommend if you, you know, early on in your career, if you did some stuff that's not really relevant to what you're doing now, if you're a more tenured employee, you can kind of either, you know, drop it off totally, or you can group them together, you know, held various positions in customer service and blah, blah, blah. There's a number of ways to skin that, many, many of which are just fine. But to answer your question, I think you're okay that way. Chi, how are you? Oh, Lorenza. Lorenza has one of my favorite names. She's a boot camper. Love having you in the program from London. Tony R. Mr. Pickles, man. How you doing? Just zipping by. Hey, by the way, I know it's 1113. And I'm not going to go into whole sales pitch or anything. I just want to let you guys know. If you're in my job search boot camp right now, we ran a promo where you get the boot camp. It's all recorded. We just we did a whole new all a whole new batch of it last month. Right now, we're in the middle of a career accelerator program. So if you are interested, we still have two live sessions next week. We're, we're talking about organizational tactics and how to plan for and conduct your performance reviews. We just shot the first 90 days and how to get out fast. How to, get, how to prepare, plan for, and get your promotion. And we also talked about my excellence planning, how to generate great ideas. Those are all recorded. If you're interested, Kara can drop the link in. You can see it. And if you, are, if you reference this live office hours because you were here because you heard me, I'll give you $100 off and you can jump in. So I think it's, it's $597 now. Uh, but if you email me, I will give you a coupon and I will even put your name and we'll personalize the coupon for you. Okay, enough of that. Shima, how you doing? You got a question, it looks like.
So Shima, um, Shima's got a question here. During a job interview, how do you answer questions like, tell me about a time in your past that XYZ happened and how did you handle it if this situation has never ha happened to you before? So what I would do if that's the case, uh, usually, now I, I, I don't know uh, how many years you've been working. I don't know what type of positions that you have held. Rarely, rarely will an employer ask you a question where you have not encountered some way, shape, or form to have that or be able to give them a sample or an idea. Now, there's two things I'd recommend. Number one, if you have something remotely close, I would just respond back and say, that exact situation I have not encountered yet, but I have a similar situation where, and then feed them that, and then see if that's acceptable. That's one route. The other route is in this in this book, and I don't know if you you have it. And by the way, one thing I didn't mention when you when you order this is you immediately get the ebook and the audio book. So instant access. You know, if you're in the U.S., this thing usually comes within a week, and if you're outside the U.S., depending on where you are, it takes a bit longer. But in here, there is a chapter called my Silver Bullet Interview uh, chapter. And it has the 14 most effective job interview questions. And now while 14 might not sound like a lot, under each of those 14 questions, I also identify alternate forms of the question. So all told, there's like 43 questions. And then I explain what it is, you know, what it is they're asking, why they're asking it, what they're looking for, and the very best response. So in, in those 14 questions, some of them, not all of them, are behavioral interviewing questions just like the one you referenced. So any question that asks you about a time in your past, a scenario or a situation that already occurred, it, that can be construed or flat out is a behavioral interviewing question. It's tell me about a time when, how did you do that, and those kind of things about your past. And they're in here. Those common ones are in here, and I would highly recommend looking at that chapter because that will give you ideas of how you can draw parallels to other situations in your life that have actually happened that are related to the type of question that they're asking you. I go into that in the book. So I would I would grab that, Shima, and you know, if um, if you really don't want the book, I'll give you a free ebook. So just you know, knock your socks off with that. All right, John, hey, how you doing? C L A O J. Two. How you doing? Joshua, good to see you again. Chi, hey. Rosa, nice to have you. Mr. Pickles. This is a good question here, Tony. Uh, what, do you, what do you suggest for the subject line of an email sent to a top hiring official of a company you have specifically targeted and get their attention yet be respectful? Here's one thing you got to remember. If So everybody... Everybody, uh, think, wait, think about yourselves for a minute, okay? So all of you, just think about your own email inbox. My inbox, as somebody who has offered himself to the world, has, you know, has a, a social media platform, whose email is out there, I get 3,000 emails a day, okay? That's, that's rare that somebody, anybody that you are targeting will get that many. The people that you are generally targeting get about 150, 140, 160 in that range a day. That includes work, personal, nonsense, and so on. Okay, that's the, those are the stats. So who you are likely targeting is probably you know, could be an executive within a company, could be a director, vice president, could be a regional vice president, could be a manager, could be anybody. The likelihood that they are getting more than 100 to 100, you know, 150 emails a day is rare. Now, the emails that they actually get come in different forms. Some of them are from their superiors, their peers, their subordinates, and people inside the organization. That's the bulk of the emails they get. Then there are emails that come from outside, outside them. What happens is when you are used to getting certain kinds of emails, your brain puts you in what we call a habit loop, and basically they get a little more numb to those types of emails. 
an email sent from somebody into their work email box that is not inside the company will automatically send a differentiating alert to them and they are likely to open it. Now, you do not need to be super fancy with the subject line because you're not you're not like trying to sell them a product or whatever. You just want them to open up your email. What's more important about your email is the content. Now, you are in the boot camp. You have the boss hunting cover letters and the 10 networking templates that you can use as the inside text of the email depending on who you're sending it to, what the relationship is to you, and what it is that you want. The subject line is far less important than you would imagine to get you to open it, to get you to open it. It's different. You are a unique send in and there's a great likelihood that that email will actually be opened because it's not like it's a repetition, even like for somebody who follows me at my community. I give you an email every Tuesday morning. They, you get conditioned to know that that's coming, but you're coming in uniquely. So if you just you know use the sample subject lines that I gave you around you know inquiry you know regarding working with you or working with you or your company or just something very basic and very simple, that's what I would recommend for what you are trying to do. And I, I wanted to give you the additional color and context around that because that's actually what's happening. That's actually what's happening. I know if you send me an email when I was an executive working for organizations and I was not getting 3,000 emails a day, I opened every email that came to me and I looked at what it was. So I, I would not be worried about that. And so for you, Tony, I would use the boss hunting cover letter and I would, I would just make it, an, I, you do not need to be fancy. It, it's not, that's not what's going to get you results. That's not what's going to get you results. All right. Steve, you know what? I just, I work every day and it doesn't matter to me what day it is. I'm on a Thursday schedule today. So yeah, <laughs> but I think I caught that pretty early on. Hey, Dinesh, Gary Madrin, how you doing from New Zealand? Brian, how are you? Excellent, Steve, glad to hear it. Santa, what can I do for you? So, this is a fantastic question. Uh, Santa's asking, how do I use my summer job experiences as a waitress, a cashier, a deli clerk to make an application for a bank teller job? So, this goes for anybody who's junior, maybe coming out of college, right? You might not have a lot of work experience. Somebody who's trying to make a career change, this advice is all the same. You have to figure out what capabilities make a good bank teller. So there are a number of things that a bank teller does that makes a great bank teller a great bank teller. There's customer service. There's an accounting element, right? You got to be good with dollars and cents. You got to be able to use the calculator. You got to be able to, you know, work the little machines with the bills and those kind of things. Any, any of the abilities that you developed as a server, you called it waitress, but server, whatever it is, you were serving the community, the customers, and so forth, you are gaining customer service skills. So in your cover letters and in your in your resume, you want to start highlighting those things. Now, if you are on the younger side and you are just coming out of school, I have a collegiate resume template you can grab. The collegiate te uh, template lays out everything and there's it's even a sample i even put samples in that one for the, for the college students or recent college graduates and you could use that and up at the top i recommend a profile i don't call it this for college students i don't call it a career profile because you don't have a career but you are coming out with a profile that talks about who you are and 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 what you've done and you can bring forward this is if you are you know recently a student or out of school recently but you know you're a recent graduate or a student or whatever and that has gained customer service skills through summer internships, part-time jobs, and so forth. I actually lay out the language for you. So you can try that. If you are a professional and you've, you've been working as a server and a cashier and a deli clerk, I would do the same kind of things, except you're going to want to you're going to want to make a career profile, and you're going to you're, use the professional template, and then you're going to have to lay out your professional experience. In, in, the, in the work experience section or in the professional work experience section of the resume, but I would do the same thing. And if you are in fact changing careers or looking to break into this area, uh, I would also uh, direct you to the career 
uh, change your playlist that I have on YouTube. There's a, a quite a handful of videos that will help you connect the dots for your would-be employers. So I hope that helps. Praveen, how you doing? Byron, where's the huge question? Jesse Jones, love the name. You are welcome. Frank Truesdale. Oh, Gwen Tuesday. Gwen, hey, how you doing? Gwen, that email you sent me, the ALG one, I read it like four times and I laughed harder and harder every time I read that. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, wait. I love that you're actually asking me. It, for those of you... Okay, wait, I'm going to try to make this really quick because I don't want to make this a sales pitch. So in January, we did a brand new job search boot camp. It is my signature job searching program. Right now, we are creating, so you could come and do this real time with me, my career accelerator program. That's February. And in March, I'm going to have a new program that will be a monthly subscription, which will all be about leadership, uh, coaching, mentorship, but, and that will be a modest monthly membership or, you know, we probably will have various payment options. Uh, but for a modest monthly fee, you can come in and meet with me and the group privately each month. It's awesome. But it will be on leadership con concepts. Everything, think everything that you need to grow your leadership skills, develop your career, everything from organizational tactics, communication tactics, people management tactics, planning, execution, everything that, uh, honesty, integrity, all, the traits, uh, building relationships, networking, all the stuff that re is required to be a great leader. We are all leaders in some form or fashion. So, uh, and that's going to be my signature leadership coaching uh, program. You'll out there will also be private, uh, private sessions, one-to-one -one sessions along those lines too. And that's coming out in March. And I believe we are going to be having like a three-day live bonanza that leads up just to my little monthly coaching thing. It's not going to be little, but it's 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 going to be pretty fun. And that's later in March. But thank you for asking. I mean, it's going to be a boatload of fun. And we, we these monthly sessions, I mean, I, I love them with my troops. I mean, it's really, really nice. And thank you for asking and would love to have you. Jesse Jones. Oh, look it. Your resume tips have afforded me the opportunity to secure an HR recruiter interview today with an industry-leading IT org. I would consider myself a no novice interviewee. Jesse, congratulations. Get this sucker if you don't have it. Go through it. You'll be a pro before you know it. As a matter of fact, this is really funny. You know what I get a lot? People get the book or they get the ebook or they listen to the audiobook and then they send me emails and they say, I'm way better at interviewing than the interviewers are now. And that's true because you will understand what they should be doing for what you need to be ready for. So good luck, Jesse. I hope, you know, fingers crossed. And will you do me a favor? And, you know, this thing gets recorded. So when we're done, YouTube records it and then I leave it on the channel. Come back and in the comments, let me know how the interview went or if you have any questions about it. And I'll be pulling for you. And how you doing? Um, Jesse, question, HR recruiter compensation inquiry, you mentioned several times before to navigate around this question, focusing on the fact that the detailed responsibilities are still unknown at this point to be able to provide an accurate yes. So if you are asking me a question, so the I have a number of videos out there that speak to the salary negotiation itself, the buildup throughout the process that starts with the application asking your expected salary and even verbally when you communicate live with somebody whether you are on the phone on the video screen or in person and they ask you what's your expected salary the moral of the story is not to give them a number it, first off you don't you don't know what you expect you might expect less if they give you more health care benefits, better vacations, bigger bonuses, and all that good stuff. So it's really what I call uneducated. Now, first off, they shouldn't even be asking you this, but I know why they ask you this. They want to just get an idea where your head is. 
But if you check my video out on why everything you think about salary negotiation is wrong, it's going to give you some insider tips to specifically what's happening after you don't give them a number. And no recruiter on earth, I don't care what anybody said, I've negotiated more than 600 employment agreements. And I would put that experience up against anybody. There is not a recruiter out there, unless they're hiring for their recruitment team, that has a say-so in what you actually earn. The hiring officials, the management team, those folks will determine that based on what you bring to the table, how badly they want you, the value you're going to contribute, that, and, and their budgets. So those are, those are factors that they'll deal with. The most important thing for you is not to give them a number at the beginning because only bad stuff can happen if you do. And don't worry if you don't because there's not a recruiter out there who doesn't want to move you forward. As a matter of fact, one other thing I would toss in here that I haven't mentioned uh, all that much is we did a, uh, a live session and, uh, and I also, I'm trying to think if we released a clip of it, but there's a live session out there on working with recruiters that we did. It's in the live office hour section of my YouTube channel. If you just type recruiter, it'll come up or working with recruiters. And that will help you get into the mind of the recruiter and what the recruiter ultimately wants, which is to move you forward, to move you forward. The recruiter does not want to stop you. Think about what the recruiter's goal is. The recruiter's goal is to fill that position. By knocking you out, if, if you have the goods and I like you, there's no way in hell I'm going to stop the process because you didn't give me a number about your salary. I want to move you forward because I want to get you into the process. I hope the hiring official can convince you to come. And, and I want to show that I'm doing my job and making progress by recruiting good people and let them hash it out. That's what recruiters think. And people who don't understand that just don't have any idea what's going through the mind of a recruiter. So I would check that out as well. That's a good one for you. Vinica, how you doing? Love having you in the program. Hope you're enjoying it. Deepak. Rohit, hey, nice to have you. Uh, I do. Uh, Rohit, so he's asking uh, any uh, background suggestion, do's and don'ts for final sales interview with the boss of the hiring manager. Yes, when you are interacting with your boss's boss, the most important thing in my opinion, assuming you fit culturally, the hiring manager, you got to make some assumptions here. If you're interacting with your boss's boss, your boss, your potential boss, is feeling pretty good about you because what, what he or she is saying is, I like this guy. You should talk to him, right? So let's assume that that's the case. Not always, but 99.9% .9 of the time. So when you get to the boss's boss, you want to do a couple things. You want to make sure that your conversation with that individual is elevated, meaning you're not talking down here about your daily roles and responsibilities. You're talking about and asking, where's the company going? What's his or her vision? How is the team you're going to be on, in, in this person's opinion, going to support that? You want to make sure you're talking corporate level stuff, strategy, direction, challenges, and so forth. You do not want to be having a conversation about what you're going to be doing each day and how you do your job. And all. The, the boss's boss is go, naturally should assume that the people that he or she manages that have already interviewed you have vetted that out have vetted that out. So this is about chemistry, connection, forward thinking, and that kind of stuff. So just make make, make sure of that. And when you when when you are are interviewing with senior level folks in the organization, by the way, I'm going to do a whole video uh, live office hour session on this, but key questions that you need to be asking yourself about whether you should accept this new job. But one of those things that you want to make sure that you're focusing on is 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 the area that you and the unit that you are joining going to be, is it considered strategic in the direction the company is going? So let's say the company has multiple products. Is what you're doing, whether they've been doing it for a while or whether they're starting it up and trying it out, you could be, uh, you, you know, you're in sales, right? So you could be selling a product or a service that they're trying out. That's risky that maybe they've been doing for a while, but they don't deem it to be the future and all that good stuff. So I would also investigate that. 
Where do you see what I'm selling fitting into the overall strategy? Now, if you're all, if they only have one product and you're you're just a, a, an additional salesperson, you probably don't need to worry so much about that. But I don't know ex- your exact situation, but I would be I would hawk that. I really would would investigate that deeply. I'd hope that helps. Praveen. I don't just have suggestions on cover letters. I got a whole honking playlist, and there's probably uh, one, two, three, four. There's like four or five free ones out there that I get that I that I give you. So go check the cover letter playlist on the YouTube channel, and download them and knock your socks off. I am particularly fond of my seven sentence cover letter. The four sentence cover letter is very sweet, and if you're if you're just changing positions, like I'm a salesperson in one organization, I see there's an opening for a sales. Pos- position in another organization or PM or whatever, the four sentence one is really cool. If you are breaking into an organization, you're not sure if they have a position or you want to add a little more color, make it a little more flowery but tight, I have a seven sentence cover letter and that you can get that one in the video I shot about how to get a job when there's no job opening or when there's no publicized job opening so that you don't know if there's a job there or not. That seven sentence cover letter is gold. I also have some boss hunting cover letters and some other stuff you can try. All right. Hey, Crystal from Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. Sam, how you doing? Robin from Germany. How are you? Rosa, how are you? So Rosa, tough question. How can somebody who is over 50 and changing careers interview well for a company run mostly by younger folks, Rosa? So, and everybody else who's like me in the over 50 crowd. The biases that we face being, say, 50 and older are uh, what you're really trying to overcome is not the fact that somebody has an issue with hiring somebody who's in in their third decade of, of working. That's not ultimately the problem you're trying to address. The, the issues that you need to overcome from an ageism standpoint are the biases younger folks have about the future behavior of the senior employee. So is she set in her ways? Uh, does she know current and cutting techniques? Would she actually spend the time to learn them? Does she have the energy, the stamina, right the charisma to go forward and be a uh, be an energetic employee and fit so you have to overcome those obstacles and i've given you all the answers in the video i shot about how to overcome age discrimination in a job interview there's literally a video on that i would highly recommend it i also as a little bonus tip for you would check out my video on job search advice for over 50 year olds I don't just talk about the interview. I talk about the searching and how you how you get to the interview to create the interview because you got obviously you got to get the interview. So what is it that you should be doing? I go into all that. Check those two videos. I highly recommend them. It has your answers in there. Asim, respect you too. Thank you, Michael. How are you? What do you suggest to do? Had a full day of interviews early December. Good. Recruiter says we'll be in touch. Uh oh. Now it's February and still no response from them. What would you do? Would you reach out? So, okay, wait. So, Michael, um, sorry to hear about that situation because that stinks. And let me just offer this little opinion here. I cannot stand it when companies do that. You took your time out to go in an interview, they should respect that. You prep for that interview, I'm sure. They should respect that and all the effort that you put in. The least the company can do is get back to you within a reasonable amount of time. And reasonable is like a week or two. Okay, so and say, this is where we are. We're still in the process. We're interviewing people, whatever. You didn't didn't shake out well, whatever it is. The fact that we are, we're not just in February. It's like almost March now. So you got January, you got almost all of February, and and that assumes it was late December. God only knows if it was, it was, oh, you said, you said early in December. So it's like three months. I would, I would send them the script that I gave in how to get the job after being rejected. You're going to make an assumption that you were rejected. I would send them a message and literally say, you know, 
thank you for your time. I assume since I have not heard from you and so on, and then kind of go into the script and then follow the rest of it and just kind of go out with some class. Uh, I would I would say that number one, it's probably a lost cause. That's just a fact. Number two, though, I would ask myself, would I even want to work for an organization who does that? I mean, think about this, folks. If you are in a recruitment process, that's, I mean, that's like first date stuff, right? They should be on their best behavior. They should be, they should be courting you. They should be putting a good foot forward. And I, I got news for you. Um, right now, I know some of you won't believe this. It the market very much favors the employee. I get that a, num a number of you here, actually, probably a lot of you here, are looking for that next opportunity. But employers still should be respecting the fact that this market is in the employee's favor. And don't get me wrong; it doesn't matter if the market's hot. It doesn't matter if the market's cold. You know, not every business does well when the economy thrives, and not every single individual has a job when the when the employment market is healthy. But what I have found is the best employers will always communicate with you. So if you had those interviews in early December, and you, if you were coming and interviewing with me at Mile Walk, or you were my candidate as part of a search Mile Walk was doing, I would be touching base with you each week until there was a resolution. Each week. Hey, we're still interviewing candidates. Hey, this is where, okay, they dropped off. Hey, they want to go to the next step. Hey, you didn't make it or whatever. But that, that to me, I would, I would just assume that they're, 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 they're dead. And I would, I would send them the message around how to get the job after being rejected. I would part ways with them using that and, and make the assumption that you were not selected. And I, I, but I think that's just crap is what I think. Opoku, you are welcome. Jesse Ivankso, how are ya? Boot camper, glad to see you too. Been watching the resume recommendations and have seen a change in inquiries. Yay! I'll tell you what, folks, uh, and, and I'm going I'm to just say this one more time before we get up. Maybe Kara could drop it in the chat. If you are interested in the boot camp and jumping into these, you, you don't just get the boot camp. You get the Career Accelerator program, which is a $400 course, and we still have two live sessions to go. Super fun, great community. If you're interested, Kara could put the uh, the link in the in the chat. Check it out, and if you want, if you reference this live office hours, this special Friday edition that we had on February 22nd on the day Andy's dad had his shoulder surgery, which I hope you all wish him well, I will give you $100 off. All right. Love to hear it. Mike Lowry, great to hear from you, buddy. I love that you're you're engaged. Hope everything is going well. That's a boot camper with a new job. Had to make a mild career pivot, and I love it. Andrea, great to see you. Should I include higher education for entry-level positions? Yes. This is all of you that have wonderful educational credentials. I never would want you to dumb down what your accomplishments I, I think that's awesome. I think that's phenomenal. I would, hell yes, I would include them. Tammy Ann, great to see you. Byron, Andrew, I have worked for several companies over the past few years. How can I spin this to look more positive on my resume and in interviews? So your, your work history is your work history. That I can't do anything about. I would lay it out as it is. Uh, however, I have an answer about uh, the job hopping nature of what you're referring to. And if you check out my video on the best answer to the job hopper question, there's your answer. There's your answer. For any of you that feel that somebody would consider you a job hopper, please, please check that video out. I give you the answer. And in a nutshell, you do not want to explain every transition. So if you got four companies in the last you know, four years, if you have to explain each of these, you're dragging the interviewer through four problems. And the longer that explanation goes out, the worse it is for you. You need to create this as one problem that you have solved and that interview, sorry, that video on that interview question or their, their, their investigation of you being a job hopper will show you how to do that. 
And so that's what I would do, Byron. It will help you. It's a popular video and I get a lot of emails about it because people, they love the response and it works. It flat out works. Mr. Mobius. Recommendation on how to ask customers and LinkedIn contacts for job leads. I, uh, I have a ton of networking videos that address all of that. What I would do is check out the video that I have online about how to, how to network when you're job searching. And it, it goes into all of that. Just check the video out. It's that video might be like 20 minutes or whatever, but it goes into all the stuff that you need to do and how I would address how I would approach it. So I hope that helps. Ed, you're welcome. Marisol, is there a time frame in which one can reapply for a position that you were previously told no? So this is a great question. Now, here's what I would do. When you all go through any interviewing process and you have been told no, I would immediately check the video out about how to get the job after being rejected and that's how I would part ways. I'm not going to go into the script, but I give you a script that basically is a combination of a thank you and another cover letter. It's melded together. It's the sweetest thing. Use that. That's your goodbye. That's going out with class. That's leaving the door open for you to contact them again. 30 days later, if you were if you were rejected for something that is changeable, meaning if they say to you, Marisol, we don't think that we want to hire you because you're not a good cultural fit and you don't fit these traits that are important to us. That's DNA level squashing and you will never get into that company because those notes are inside your HR file and your recruitment file that say not a cultural fit due to this, that, and the other thing. And whoever, if you reapply, they're going to immediately go there and they're going to look at that and they're going to say no. Okay. If you get rejected because they stalled the position, they we call it a balk, basically like a like a pitcher balking uh, and not not throwing the ball. Then what you can reapply. If they tell you, we found somebody that we liked a little better and he or she was a little stronger, but thank you, we really liked you, that's awesome. 30 days later, you should contact them again. You do not go through the applicant tracking system. If you've been rejected, you have somebody's email address, uh, assuming you went through an interviewing process because there's a scenario where you could get rejected and I'm going to get to that one in a second where you got rejected from the ATS. If you go through that interviewing process, you'll have somebody's email address. You want to go back to that person and say, I thought I would check in. It's been a month. I just wanted to make sure that everything played out as you had suspected it would. But I thought I would just follow up with you to see if anything has changed, um, if it worked out with the other candidate, if, uh, if, if there are any additional positions open like this, or if there are any other positions in your organization you think I would be a good fit for. That's if you went through an interview process and got rejected. If you applied and never saw a human, because that happens, right? Boom, you get a bong letter right away. Hey, you don't fit. If, if you apply and you get rejected like that, assume no one ever saw your resume. And then I would wait and I would try to go directly to somebody. And this happened, we do this with a lot of the boot campers that before they get into the boot camp and they're applying through the applicant tracking systems or getting these rejection emails, we just we teach them how to then you know target the people in the organization, go direct, and what happens is a lot of times they're able to surface connections and actually get interviews, even though the, the computer knocked them out. So there's almost you don't have to wait at all. And that you could the next day I would just try try contacting somebody else. So that's what I would do. So if you were previously told no, you were either previously told no one of a couple ways. Either you interviewed and they told you no, or they you went to the applicant track system and they told no. If you targeted somebody, they opened your email, they looked at your resume and said no, I would still go back. I would still go back. So I hope that helps. B. Sutton, how are you? B. Sutton, I think you were the one who asked me about the Franken Mentor video and we're going to do a session on that. Uh, I don't know when that session is, because I'm, I'm, it's, but it's planned somewhere out there in the future. 
Mike Morgan, Andrew, you are at least 50% responsible for the job offer received and accepted this week. Yeah, baby. I love it. I, I, it makes no difference to me. I don't need any credit. I'm just happy for you. I love it. Tammy Ann, how are you? Never met the guy. Boom, boom, boom. Rosen. Rodrigo. My friend from Florida, I'm graduating from grad school in April, and I was wondering what timeline you recommend for applying to jobs to kickstart my career after graduation. Now, get going. Seriously, we're two months, two months out. So you need to get rolling. You're not behind. Just get going. Actually, what's really kind of nice, too, um, if you are done in April, that's better than being done in May like a lot of colleges and, and other institutions are. So get get rolling, man, get rolling, because you're going to, you know, I mean, you think about ki- uh, college students looking for internships now. They started in January. So I would, I would get rolling. Slovakia, I love this. Thank you. Hey, Crystal. Sandra. Can we all give Cassandra a, a live office hours hug? We love our new timers. Love our old timers. Crystal too. Christine. Christine Friend. I like that. Okay. I, I don't know if that's your last name, or, uh, but I, I like it. Christine from LA. Uh, graduate with BS in industrial technology five years ago, but have worked five years retail management. Can't get any traction with entry-level jobs in industrial fields. Should I go back to school? No. Uh, wait. So actually, that I first off, I can never, uh, as a coach, I would never tell somebody what to do, whether you should go to school or not go to school. I would like to help you think through uh, what benefits there are to doing certain things based on my experience and my perception of what matters in the world. Education is fantastic, but education teaches you a trade. Even the higher education teaches you a trade. It does not teach you how to operate in the real world with the seven or eight different influential things that are happening to you on a daily basis to operate in the work world, in, in real life. So if you, if you are looking to get into a profession where education is required in order for you to hold the job, then going to school is a good idea. If I want to be a nurse, I need to go to nursing school. If I want to be a paralegal, I need to go to paralegal school. If I want to switch and become a lawyer, I got to go to law school. That that's what I'm talking about. That will matter. Now, you might, you might consider going into a different line of work and going and getting your MBA and giving yourself you know, positioning yourself to interview with companies when you're done. That's an expensive proposition. And I don't find that the ROI in doing that is commensurate with the amount of time it takes to do that. Not the money you got to pay, the time and all that good stuff. That's just my personal opinion. That's okay. I, it'd be, it's nice to have an MBA. That's an option. Now, for you to go back to school for industrial technology or any of that other stuff, I would not do that. I would try to do a better job of tactically bringing myself to market. So people say to me, but this happens a lot in the boot camp. They come to me and they say, I love this. I love you. I wanted to get in your boot camp and I think I have a resume problem. And then we talk and we go back and forth and sometimes we do it through sessions and sometimes we do it one-on-one and sometimes we do it inside the system. And the first thing that I explain to them is, you probably don't have a resume problem. You probably have a searching problem. You are not getting your resume in front of the right people at the right places. So when people say, well, I've submitted my resume 400 times to whatever, that's zero in my, by my count. If you went into applicant tracking systems 400 times, that counts as zero. You basically did zero work. You basically sprayed your resume around, gave yourself a less than 3% chance of being seen, and it was probably even lower. So you need to know the tactics to bring your resume and yourself to market to reach the right people. That is a searching skill. It's not a resume problem. And what happens is if you are packaging up your resume and your cover letter and getting it in front of the right people, by doing the right things, you're going to have better results. One thing I would highly recommend for you, Christine, in in November, on the 29th of November of last year, 
I did a live office hours on uh, my four, a 14 day challenge. This 14 day challenge will get you conditioned to doing the activities that likely lead to job search results the fastest, especially for you now, in identifying companies that you want to target, identifying people at those organizations, and then taking a step each day to hit uh, build a relationship or try to contact certain people that you are identifying. I lay it all out. It is not for you to you know to to obsess over the metrics. It is a conditioning exercise to get you familiar with the things that ultimately lead to progress and traction. When I did that in November and I invited people to email me what was happening. I was getting dozens of emails every day with people who said, I've got more traction in three days than I did in six months. That was happening, and that's right, because those activities will lead to success. Then two weeks later, on December 13th, I believe it was, I reviewed the challenges people were having with trying to go through the 14-day challenge. So as I invited everybody to email me, they were saying, well, hey, I'm having trouble locating this person's email address. I was solving the problems for them two weeks later. So one thing I would recommend for you is check those two live office hours on those dates. Don't worry about how long the live office hours is. The teaching portion is probably 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So just look at that and watch them back to back. And then I would start that process. And I assure you, I invite you to email me and let me know how that turns out. If you do that, if you follow the steps, I think you will have far greater results if you do that. So I hope that helps. And that's for anybody. And it, and I did it toward the end of last year. But that wherever you are in your search, start today. In 30 days, you'll have almost 100 companies that you targeted and took the right steps. Believe me, it works. It will work. So I hope that helps you. Ina, how you doing? Ina's a boot camper. Love having you from New York. So here's what I would do. All right, Ina's asking. I had an interview on Valentine's Day, the 14th of February. The recruiter said they would not have an answer for two more weeks. Is it appropriate to send an interest email to the employer meanwhile? So I, uh, if, if I received instruction that they would not have um, an update for two weeks, I would wait two weeks and a day because they gave you a specific time frame. And I would wait till literally till like March 2nd, I'm guessing, or, you know, whatever, you know, March 1st. And I would email them, say, hey, I know you mentioned it would be a couple of weeks. I thought I'd check in. I just wanted to reiterate my interest in this position, wanted to see if there was any updates. It's just a friendly tap on the shoulder. My guess is that they will contact you. My, my guess is that if you waited, a, you know, the two weeks or a, a two weeks in a day or whatever, I, I, I'm, get, I'm going better than 50-50 that they actually reach out to you and that you don't need to do that. Uh, but I, I don't have a, I don't, you know, I, I don't know that I would today on, we were, you know, we're recording this on February 22nd, uh, you know, it's eight days. And actually, to be honest with you, I mean, if you think about it, it that's only six days. It's only six work days, right? It's a Friday and now five more, fr- you know, five more days this week. So I don't know. I, I'd probably wait. All right. Kyle, how you doing? Kyle is an old-time boot camper, was a student when he went through it, and I love to see you here. Okay, wait, can I read it? Wait, we have got to make sure we we, we take a little snapshot of this guy's, uh, you know, in case you're wondering, I love it when the boot campers do this stuff. Andy, I told you I'd make it back on here. Thank you. Because of Andy's Malwalk Academy Boot Camp, I went from getting three interviews in a year with no offers to six interviews with six offers. Good to see you, my friend. Folks, I'm telling you, this stuff works. This stuff works. Thank you for that. I um, I remember when you got the job, buddy. I still got your email testimony. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that. Hope you're doing well. Drop me a line. Let me know what you're doing and how you're coming along. And make sure you get into my leadership program. And make sure you watch the Career Accelerator program. (laughs) Love it. Thanks, Steve. 
oh, I don't know about legend. I just, I work really hard at giving you guys as much help as I can. Let me see where, oop, sorry. Sometimes I slip. Oop. So just, there we go. Peyton, how are you? Your name's new to me. I don't know if you're a new time or new timer. Hi, Andy. I have four interviews next week. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank. Good for you. What's your advice on how to juggle four different companies at once? Great question. And not to be like completely over the top, but with I, I uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, I had sessions with boot campers and their biggest problem was how do I handle all these job offers? I'm not kidding you. And, and I, I love it. And I'm glad you guys in the community are getting traction. This is so... I, I always have base base line suggestions for this. Whenever you get into an interviewing process, the one thing I oh and by the way, I, I I did clip up a video on on how to handle it when there are multiple candidates in your job search process. The reason I'm raising that is because as all of you go into any job interviewing process, even if it's your only one, one of the things that you need to do is you need to ask about other other job seekers in the process. And in turn, what you are gonna offer is, actually you're gonna offer this first. Hey, I'm Peyton, I've got a number of different interviews this week because I'm, I'm actively interviewing and I have been fortunate enough to get connected with three other companies and yours. I wanted to just let you know that I'm going through this process. I have four interviews next week, all with different companies, and I will keep you updated on on how that goes and then as the words are still hanging out there in turn i'm wondering are there other candidates in your process i would like you know just to be apprised of and so on and i'm going to tell you exactly how to handle all that when the video comes out but the way that i would do this is i first off don't feel overwhelmed make sure you're prepped up for each one of these take the weekend make sure you are getting out ahead of this and then you know manage your energy too. I don't know if it's you know a phone screen, a phone screen, and in, in person, in person. But if you're going, some of these are like all day things. And one of my boot campers has to travel to different cities, and he's got all day sessions, like pretty much back to back, which is crazy. But um, but I would just make sure that you are communicating with them, and your transparency. Believe me, when said properly, that hey, I just wanted to keep you up to date. I know I'm sure you're actively interviewing for can you know for people for this position so I wanted to be fair and make sure that you knew this is what I was doing. That's it. You don't have to give them a whole lot of answers yet. Now, in a week from now, after you go through all that, then you're going to have to assess what happened with each of those and then you should do more communication with all of them depending on what transpires out of that. But my response Peyton is you want to make sure that you're communicating that. Believe me, Say it politely. You you know you're not putting them on guard or anything. You're just saying, hey, I want I'm sharing. I want to let you know this is what I have going because I I understand that you know you you have a role to fill as well. But that I'm always I'm always um, a fan of that honesty. All right, let me see if I can squeeze in um, a couple more here. Big Ed. All right, I'm going to be looking into jobs in New Zealand, Australia, and Ireland as I got my MBA in the UK. Wonderful. Do you do any CV videos or have recommendations for CVs that are unique? I do not, but what I have found. By the way, in the Mile Walk Academy, in the boot camp, we have people from every inhabited continent in the world. We have a lot of people from the UK. We have a lot of people from Australia. They have used the template that I provide uh, from a commercial resume standpoint. And it, it, it seems to be working darn, darn well. We've got some people in Europe who have needed to make slight alterations to the template because some of the countries want pictures on the resume, so little nuances. But these are minor adjustments. And, and the other thing that's really nice is, and we've had this a number of times, we have uh, Facebook communities and people will br- you know go out to the Facebook community and ask for advice and insight from people in respective countries that they're moving to or people within their own country. What are they finding? We have a dialogue about it. I remember one woman was moving from South Korea to Germany 
and she wanted to move to Germany for her own personal reasons, but didn't really understand culturally how the interviewing process went, what the resume looked like. She put a post out on the Facebook group, and then within like minutes, I mean, within like minutes, she had a bunch of responses. And then I think she ultimately connected with somebody who was in the U.S. who had a relative who lived in Germany, who got her the format, the template. We reviewed that one, got that in order, and then in it went, and on she moved. So, you know, I mean, to answer your question, it's not just about, it's about the community too. But I I, uh, I don't know that I have like an Australian template. I mean, it's, I have a template that I think is good universally with some modifications. All right, Michael, how you doing? I had an on-site interview. Oh, wait, I thought I got that one. Stacy C. Chi, how you doing? Jeanette Kearns, how are you? So Jeanette, uh, do you have a networking email template that is for, re uh, for reaching out to LinkedIn connections and not for boss hunting? I do, but only paying students of the Mile Walk Academy in the boot camp can get them. In the boot camp, I have a booklet that has 10 networking templates for any scenario you can imagine, but I can't give everything away for free. So it's one of the things that uh, I do offer to the boot campers. And like I said, if you want to take advantage of that, I will give you a hundred bucks off if you reference this. And I don't think you are in the boot camp. I don't think. Um, but if you are, then, then they're there for you in session three. All right. Um, and Kara, and then I just see at 1114, she put the boot camper thing. All right, Carrie Freeman, let's get you in here. Is it okay to send an email to an employer after you've applied to a posted position and express interest? Yes, yes. Actually, do it the other way. Email directly first. Uh, now, what's done is done, Carrie, right? So, but I, I would not hesitate. And don't worry. And, and a lot of times you're putting it in the applicant tracking system and they're never seeing it. So don't worry that you're duplicating things or don't worry like, oh my goodness, they think they're gonna think I'm stalking them. It's not the way it works. Dave Patterson, would you say most C-level and executive level positions are sent to third-party recruiters? I would not say that. Can networking result in a position from being defined for the individual? I would say that. Yes. Yes, yes. Josh, Joshua, you are welcome. And I think he's commending Steve. That's awesome. And 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 Fook, great to have you new to new to the channel. All right, folks. I still 119. All right, man. I'm gonna try to get. I hate saying goodbye to you guys. I really do. All right, wait. A couple of parting notes. Grab this if you don't have it. Otherwise, you're gonna be waiting. It takes four to five weeks to print the 2,000 books. So we still got a couple hundred of these left. So hurry up and grab them. And like I said, if you're interested in the boot camp, just email support at malwalk.com and we'll, we'll get you in and you can jump in and I will give you that bonus and you can jump in for the last couple sessions or get the recordings and, uh, and, and get my undying love forever. Let's see. All right, Jessica, we're going to hit you. And wait, before I answer this, if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I put new videos out every Tuesday. We have live office hours pretty much every Thursday, but sometimes we make exceptions like this. And so I don't want you to miss any of that. And I also have some other videos that come out every now, you know, on, on, off, on off schedule because I like to surprise you with those. All right, Jessica, I think, I think so. I'm shortlisted for, the, for a job that the company is still interviewing for. Okay, I'm talk, taking this time to enhance my skills for the position and in general. Should I let them know that? Sure, why not? You, as part of your process, uh, I would I would always let the employer know anything that you're doing to bolster your skills that make you uh, more ready, more adept, better fit, or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. And I would also, I would probably do that as a matter of a normal check-in with them. So like if they get back to you and say, hey, Jessica, we want to schedule you for the next thing, say, okay, great, I'm really looking forward to it. Be, and, and by the way, this is what I've been doing. So you want to, you, you almost want to do it in the course of interaction as opposed to sending a separate email um, that just kind of comes out of the blue like, hey, I'm doing this. It just, it goes over a little better. 
All right, folks, listen, I got to run to a meeting. I love having you. Next week on Tuesday, you're going to get a little motivational video from me about how to instantly boost your mood. It's a short video. And then on Thursday, I'm with my career accelerator people. And then I'm, I'm, so we're off next week. I'm back on the 7th of March. And then we've got the 7th of March, the 14th of March. And then I'm doing like a three day in a row live bonanza on YouTube. It's going to be great. So, and that kind of leads up into my leadership stuff. So we're going to talk about a lot of leadership things. It'll probably be at 11 each day, like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. All right, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're sharing this stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. I want everybody to have a great weekend. And I will see you next, I will see you on the recordings or in my area inbox on Tuesday. Take care.